Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Zero, and welcome back to the Cat Lady. Previously on the Cat Lady, we ended up in some kind of hospital, filled with a bunch of annoying nurses. Then we were injected with something, and we ended up in some kind of wacky drug dream world. The drugs have worn off, and I feel better now. But I can't let them do that to me again. I need to get out of here. Well, we went into the drug world, and then we came back with some drug. If you really are a friend, then they- But I know it. Sheila. Yes. It was my mother who sent you, after all. I'm sorry I didn't believe you. But my head's all messed up. So, let's have a little chat, sweetheart. Do you know how to get out of here? We're not supposed to get out. We must stay here. Do what they say. Take pills they give us. Sometimes, if I behave, they give me the red stuff. I wait for it. I'm being good. What is this red stuff? It's a drug. My favorite one. Red stuff takes the pain away. I must stay here. Good nurses have been most kind. They always remember. They know I'm suffering. But it is not the same as the drugs I see in my dreams. On the other side of the mirror, there's a spider's heart full of drugs. I just can't seem to find it anymore. I see. So that's what we found then. Feel like sharing? What's your name? There is nothing to share. Everyone died. Everyone. And my treat, my red stuff, it's not the same. I keep lying to myself. I'm a mean little liar. Always have been. This vein, you see, it goes straight to my heart. That's why it hurts so much. I wish I could. Just one more time. But it's all lost now. Everything. I was always happy to settle for a consolation prize, you know? How about we swap our name bands? Oh yeah, I don't mind. But that would be like a favor to you, yeah? Well, technically you wouldn't lose anything. Because I'd give you my name band instead. Does that make any sense? Sure, yeah. I do want something better in return, though. I'm not that stupid. I know you'll use it to get out of here. Oh, I never said you're stupid. I... I just really want to go home. Please understand. That's fine. I don't mind. I'll give it to you if you get me the red stuff. What do you say? I thought nurses give it to you anyway. No, not that. I'm talking about the real thing. Something you can only get in the world of dreams. Now that is something special. Is it safe? It's perfectly safe. Um, okay. I'll see what I can do. All right, so I already have the stuff to give her. I just need to get out of this dialogue tree. Are you all right? I'm fine. Yes, it's all fine. It's just hard to wait, you know? They said I can have it. You know, yeah? So I wait here. Don't want to miss it. That nurse promised it to me. The one with the red glasses. You mean the home stuck? I think it's been three hours already. Why are they late? Do you think something happened? Do you think she changed her mind? Because I swear if she did, I will hurt myself again. I swear to God, I will hurt myself again. I'm sure they'll be here in a minute. They're probably just very busy. That's all. What exactly is this little treat? you mentioned. It's the red teardrop of pure happiness. 
They bring it. I drink it down, and my pain goes away. Without it, I just feel so angry. It's like I'm going crazy. <laughs> it's funny, but I just get so fucking angry sometimes. Yeah, I think I. I think. I think I need to get dying, out of here. I heard. She said I'd go to hell for it, but I didn't do anything. I didn't know. Does he know? Who? Him! Right. Okay. No, probably not. I need the red medicine. I need it now. I must be a good girl. I must be a nice girl. Maybe I could get you some of that stuff. Do you know where they keep it? Oh, they have it hidden well. You can't get there. Or maybe you can. I see it in my dreams sometimes. It's where the nurses are. But in my dream, there are no nurses there. I see it, but I can't get it. It's so near, and yet so far. I can still hear the broken heartbeat of the spider's heart. I'll talk to you later, yeah? Yes. Go. Be careful. They're watching us. And remember, we must be nice to earn the red stuff. Always be nice. Poor woman. Yeah, that was something. See, like, Downfall, both of these games share the theme of both the real world and the spiritual world kind of interchangeably interacting. And I guess certain characters can kind of freely move through them. And they both have this kind of very vague existence. It's like, what's his name? Obviously, he had some supernatural things going on for sure. But in the end, of course, you find out that he just murdered everyone in the apartment and all the stuff that happened in the game didn't happen. And at the same time, it kind of did. It's, it's always kind of confusing. Not close enough. I've found the thing you asked me for, but are you absolutely certain it won't harm you? Don't be silly. Of course it won't. Fine. I hope you know what you're doing. Can I have your name band now, please? Yes. No matter what they say, I do keep my promises. What do they? You know what? It doesn't matter. Thank you for your help. I really need to get out of this madhouse. Where are you going? Nothing like a little bit of controlled chaos to escape. Someone is coming. Thanks for giving me that idea, by the Have way. Have you rang the bell? Is there an emergency? About the wrecking the bathroom. Blocked. What? Ah, oh, well, that's hardly an emergency. It is when you need to use it urgently, like I do. I see. Fine, I'll sort it out. Just give me a minute. Ah, oh, it's the gloves. Again! I guess I'll have to get my hands dirty since the cleaner's called in sick. Now we just take my leave. I always knew my capacity for collecting things in a unusually large number would come useful. Yes, that's exactly when I need to finally go home. Sorry, Mom. We'll need to see- Here. Are you happy now? Yes, that seems fine. Can I just check your name band to confirm that you are indeed Anne Burson? Oh, all right. I didn't realize you knew how to read. There you go. Can I go now? Of course. Thank you, Mom. 
We'll see you soon. No, you won't. Now get out of my way. Later, Baldy. Later, Shades. All locked. And you must be Susan Ashworth. Um, well, perhaps I am. Do you mind if I ask you where you're heading to? I was just going for a little walk, stretch my legs, get some fresh air. Give it a rest. I'm not going anywhere. Miss Ashworth, please relax. There's been a mistake. You have been prescribed wrong medication. I apologize sincerely on behalf of my team and the hospital. But luckily, we managed to spot it on time. On time? You have no idea what I've been through? Once again, I'm truly sorry. I promise no more drugs will be given to you. I personally guarantee you will have a good, peaceful sleep tonight. And you can be discharged in the morning. Why can't I go tonight? I want to go now! I'm really sorry, but we can't legally discharge suicidal patients without a full psychiatric assessment it's too late for it now but i promise we'll have a chat in my office first thing in the morning okay and then you can go home is that all right i haven't really got much choice have i now i'd like to ask you some questions about your life susan you might find them very personal, but it's important that you answer me as honestly as possible. Fine. Let's get it over with then, shall we? I'd like to go home at last. Of course, I understand. So, Susan, let's see. Are you living alone at the moment? Hmm. I guess cats could count as friends. I live with a friend. She must be worried sick about me. A friend? Really? I'm confused. In your suicide note, you said you live alone. Okay. I lied. You shouldn't be afraid of opening up, Susan. No. I know. Please, it's for your own good that we're doing this. We need to figure out where things have gone wrong and how to fix them. I'm afraid you'll need a time machine for that, Doctor. A human mind is the best time machine you can get, Susan. All we need is for you to relax and be honest with me. Can we do that? Yes, Doctor. What do you do for a living? Hmm. I'm a waitress. I work in a cafe. You do? Do you like it? It's, it's awful. Okay. I don't mind it. It's just a job. It's important to keep busy. I'd advise you get back to work as soon as next week. I will. Describe to me what your mornings look like. What is the first thing you do each day? Sounds like the best option. I drink strong coffee and smoke on the balcony. I know it's not a great start for the day, but it's one of my little pleasures in life that I find very hard to say no to. Would you say that you feel safer at home than outside? Both of these answers are pretty loaded. I suppose. It's not really about safety. I've just felt sad for a long time now. Really sad, you know? Somehow it brings me down even more when I go out and see all those happy, successful people. It makes me feel more like a failure if I don't see it. It doesn't hurt that much. 
What do you think is missing in your life? Or rather, what is one thing that you think would make your life better? I guess I'll go with the last answer. The first three, I don't know. The last one sounds kind of kind of suicidal, though. Either way, I lose. It's something to fight for, you know? A reason to go on. There's always a reason to live. Sometimes we just don't see it that clearly. Well, Doctor, I must have gone all blind then, because I can't see any. Have you ever attended group therapy for depression, or some other form of counseling? No, I'm not sure it's a good idea. Especially the group therapy thing. I'd hate it. You should at least give it a go first, and then decide. If you don't like it, we can think of something else, yeah? If you insist. But I doubt it'll help. Do you have problems sleeping? So, so far, I've said I have good parents, or had. And let's see, I've basically made myself look kind of suicidal aside from that, though. Rarely. I sleep well most nights. If anything, I probably sleep too much. Would you describe for me how you feel at the moment? I feel fine now. I feel like I want to change my life for the better. Not really sure how yet, but I really want to try. Do you find it hard to concentrate? Nah. Sometimes it's hard to concentrate when I'm constantly beaming back between the astral and physical world, that's about it. No, not really. Do you drink alcohol, Susan? Only sometimes. I'd suggest you don't consume any alcohol at all for a while. Does that sound like something you can do? Yeah, sure. I'm not a big drinker anyway. Sometimes, when life gets too much, and people feel sad or upset, they think about suicide. Do you often think about suicide? No, of course not. I don't know what got into me. It's hard to explain why I did it. I must have thought there was no other options left. But I never used to think about it, or plan it. It just... happened. As if I'd suddenly lost control. I knew what I was doing was wrong, and yet I was unable to stop it. Strange, isn't it? Please, in your own words, try to explain to me, why did you really try to take your own life, Susan? Nothing was making me happy anymore. There wasn't a single thing that would bring a smile to my face. I kept thinking, won't it be better if I just disappear? I tried. I really tried to find something. Took a long bath, picked up a book, watched some television, but I just couldn't get into anything. All those things seemed like worthless distractions, and I myself felt obsolete, needless. It just would get worse and worse. By the afternoon, I realized I cried for the past three hours. I... I didn't even know I'd been crying until I went to the bathroom and saw my face in the mirror. I looked like a ghost. I looked like I was dead already, you know? And then I saw the sleeping pills. I thought, why not? And I did it. Do you feel as if you're a burden? Or that life isn't worth living? Not anymore. It's strange. But I feel lighter. I feel stronger. Besides, I live alone. Who could I be a burden to? What makes you feel better? I suppose cats make me really happy. I mean, no one really hates cats or anything. My cats. I always put out a bowl of food for the stray cats. They're ever so grateful. I like their company. What makes you feel worse? Hmm, I like this vague answer at the end. I'm curious what that's going to give me. It's hard to say. 
It could be anything. Sometimes it could be just little things. The way my hair looks. Shoes I can't find. When I run out of milk. I get angry with myself for being clumsy. For not being able to cheer up and just get on with things. Like everyone else. Have you imagined your funeral? And how people will react to your death? That's a pretty edgy question, Doctor. I don't think I really think about that. Oh, I never really thought about that. But I guess it would be a cheap one. I don't really know what they do with people like me. Maybe they just throw us in a hole and forget about it, since there'd be nobody to visit my grave anyway. I don't think so, Susan. The city would pay for it. Or so they want people to believe. Finally, I'd like you to tell me about Eric. Eric? Yes, your husband. I believe this might be important. What can you tell me about your relationship? What had happened between you two? That's interesting. It's getting late. Can we talk about it some other time? Hmm. Fine. I suppose you've opened enough for one day. Okay, one more question. This is just a formality, but I have to ask, are you going to do it again? That's a hard one. I don't know. But hey, I've got it. The answer is no, I'm not. Thank you very much. Excellent. We are nearly done here. There's just one more thing I must clear with you. What exactly happened last night? Well, after I'd met you outside the ward yesterday, I went back to my room and fell asleep. I slept really well, considering what happened earlier. But then someone woke me up. It was the same nurse who was so friendly with me the first night. She said we needed to talk. Liz. We must go, Susan. You are not safe here. But... Please, you must follow me. Quickly. Am I... I'm controlling a flashback. A floating bubble in the sky. That's a bit much. I went after her. The ward seemed very quiet. It must have been late at night. Harry! Wait for me. Tell me what's going on here. Are we sneaking out, Liz? Is this a sneaking mission? The security guys were gone. She pointed at the corridor and said, You go first. I'll explain everything in a minute. So this is a pretty cool ability, ability to uh, have our flashbacks kind of float in the air in front of us. I'm kind of glad no one's freaking out they see this. Oh, Susan, there we go. If we don't escape now, they're going to hurt you. Please trust me. I know a way out of here. I'll help you escape. Let's go down this corridor. I'll be right behind you. You're all right, Liz. You talk a lot, but you mean well. Compared to the other nurses here. I think I can hear someone coming. Damn it! We can't go through there. Let's turn back, Susan. I know another way. Turn left here. We can use the maintenance lift to get us out of this place. Maintenance lift. There's a lot of chairs here. Surprisingly easier to sneak out than I thought it'd be. For what kind of ward this is.
What are we doing on the roof? Liz. Mm. We can escape this way. All we have to do is just flap our arms and fly. You're Batman, aren't you? What the hell are you doing? And why is there blood on your clothes? Liz. It's quicker than the stairs. And besides, all the doors are locked anyway. This is the only way out of here. The only escape. Let's both jump. It won't hurt, you'll see. Hey guys, I found a way out. In a sense. This is a bad idea. Come down and we'll talk. I've made up my mind. I need to end this suffering now. Besides, I have no one to live for anyway. No one ever listened to me. No one ever cared. I listened. You're a nice girl. You have your whole life ahead of you. You listened. Did you really? Of course I did. You talk a lot, but I've always been a good listener. I liked talking to you. So do you remember that story then? The one I told you the other night? The one about the woman in A&E? It's a good thing I watch all my recordings after I'm done. Yeah. She smoked a cigarette and burned in bed. Okay. You have listened. Maybe you're right. Or maybe it was just a blind guess. But I must jump anyway. I have no choice. Wait! Please stop and think for a second. Did you not hear what I said? I have no choice. Yes, you do. You can choose to come back inside with me and we'll just forget this like it never happened. Okay? Do you remember that other thing I told you? I'm sure I told you about my flatmates. Did I tell you what one of them does for a living? I bet you don't remember that. How about you come down from the ledge and we have this quiz somewhere else? Perhaps over a cup of uh, that red narcotic juice or something. She's a stripper. Yes. Or at least that's what I think she is. You've listened. I just wish other people did. I'm sure they do. It can't be that bad. What do you know? Why do you care anyway? I don't want you to make the same mistake I did. I thought you of all people knew how it feels. When you're trapped and you can't trust anyone. Look, I'm sure there must be someone who cares about you. My colleagues don't care, my family don't care, even my fucking boyfriend never cared. He said he needed to go find himself. Did I tell you when he broke up with me? On Valentine's Day. Yes. Valentine's Day. You and I could have been good friends, you know. You really listened to everything I said after all. I... I'll be back. When you need help, I'll be there, Susan. Things don't work that way. It's time for me to let go. No! Oh. Oh, did she have to land in the car and step the alarm, too? After that, I went back. I tried telling people about Liz, but they all thought I was crazy again and didn't believe me. And you were absolutely sure you saw Liz jump off this building? You know, it doesn't matter. I just want to finish this and get some fresh air. Susan, I know Liz well. She wouldn't do something like that. As a matter of fact, I saw her this morning. She's fine. I'd like you to come with me and see her. Say hi. Make sure she's all right. Stop treating me like I'm crazy. Fine. I'll go. I don't even care that much anyway. That didn't sound right. It sounded pretty ominous. The door is locked? Oh no. I plan ahead, Susan. 
I had a feeling in my gut, and my gut's never wrong. I feel like I really got to know you, though. I'm very sorry you've had such a difficult life. I like your green eyes and your sleek cheekbones. You're a clever girl, Susan, but the sadness has poisoned you for too long. There is no coming back from it. For what it's worth, I would have let you go if it wasn't for Liz. Ah. You just had to say in the gut before you did this, didn't you? This is kind of a nice song. It's a bit dramatic, but it's kind of catchy in that way. Raven. I wonder what it does. It does nothing? Oh yeah, it does everything. doors. I can't see them. Just walk back to the right side of the stage. I knew it as soon as I can't miss them. You have a cool voice, Crow. I think his pupil changes in one. No, it's just blinking. I think so. Something like that. So one door leads to death and the other one leads to something else. Hello there. Does Susan like my girls? I knew she would. Oh, this reminds me of my childhood. Whatever they are, tell them to stop staring. But they are yet to guide, Susan. They are the guardians of the doors. They know which door she should enter to get the rewards. But there is one problem. There's always a problem. I'm not even surprised. Which door should I go through? I will leave that to Susan's own best judgment. But this might be her only chance to find what she had lost. Wait. And Susan will never get it back. Susan has one question. And she can only ask one of them. She must use it wisely. Fine. I can do that. But what's the catch? It's very simple. One of my girls always tells the truth. While the other one... Always lies. And I'm guessing you can't tell me which is which? It's something I've forgotten myself a long time ago, Susan. But does it really matter? What I'm questioning is all Susan needs to find the right door. Ah, their heads move too. For some reason, I'm not completely creeped out by you. It's weird. And I'm usually terrified of dolls. You have this weird familiar look to yourselves. I don't know, it's odd. Like there's no fret there, you know what I mean? Anyway, this is kind of a classic. I actually learned about this question back in, uh, I think it was when Yu-Gi-Oh! and 4Kids aired. And it's, they actually give you the riddle, I mean, the answer to solve the riddle, rather, in that uh, one episode of it with the twins. I 
I wish it stopped staring at me. door would the other doll point me to? And you've never heard this uh, riddle before. It's kind of simple once you actually start thinking about it, is you ask that question because if a doll is a liar, you ask which doll, which door would the other doll point me to, then the other doll would point you to the right one. And so let's say, let's say it would point you towards, let's say the left one right now. Well, if this doll is a liar, it's going to highlight the door to the right, because it's lying about that. Now, if it's saying the truth, then it's going to point you to the door the lying doll would point to, which would be this one, the wrong one, essentially. So you kind of secure it, so the uh, highlight door is always the wrong one. Is... is this supposed to be my reward? Flowers. I hate flowers. You lied to me. You lied. Actually, you didn't. The great reward was supposed to be death. Since we choose the right door, we get flowers, which we hate. Also, because he probably has a really asshole uh, sense of humor. <laughs> I've given you flowers. Fuck you. It's the real thing. There will be anything precious waiting for you here. Look at the lovely roses. Just like everything else in the room. They just turn into a... Like a Lincoln Park song. So that's it for the Cat Lady Part 3. This was a pretty cool part of the game. It pretty much confirms, like, we obviously know that Dr. X is evil or a serial killer of some kind. I don't know what's up with Liz. Maybe Liz was already dead. And the doctor, he didn't think you were involved with her suicide or anything. It's just like, she somehow knows about Liz. No one should know about Liz. I must dispose of her. That kind of situation. That's why Liz suddenly has red on her outfit all of a sudden when she's about to jump off. So she was probably already dead. And you're speaking to her ghost or something. Perhaps for quite a while back. Enough where the nurses don't remember or don't know her or anything like that. Anyway. So, thank you all for watching and stay tuned. Part 4 of The Cat Lady.